All right, we are recording. Cool. Good day to you all. Welcome all of you who are part of Harvest Point Impact Student Ministry. Uh, I'm Jason Brown. I am the lead middle school uh, middle school leader. I guess that we're gonna say it like that. I'm the middle school ministry leader. There we go. There you go. Middle <laughs> ministry leader uh, here, spending time with you on Sunday or whenever you decide to watch this. And then uh, right here with me, I got my main man, my big brother, the the epitome of the Mike Tyson Holyfield comeback. <laughs> Who's wearing a beanie in 89 degree weather? <laughs> now, let me explain myself, though. Let me explain myself. Number one, I'm losing hair. Number two, I haven't had a haircut since we've been trapped in the house. So it's a struggle. <laughs> you look good, though. You look good. It's a struggle for me and my hair. So I try to cover it anytime I don't got a haircut. So I'm just trying to take care of myself, look decently presentable for everybody watching. That's all. My man, if you don't know him, let me introduce to you, to some of y'all, and present to the others. My good brother, Cecil Shorts the third, Cecil Shorts the third. And Cecil, don't let this fool you because it is a mini afro. I kind of got the the Denzel. Well, it's not even that good. But luckily, <laughs> I cut hair in college, so I know how to hit that, that edge up a little bit. Oh, so it can look halfway decent. No, I'm just doing this side. This side right here ain't all you can do it for work. Well, last night on your, uh, I'm not too preachy. You had the hat and glasses on, so you couldn't see nothing. It looked so, good, though. So my production team did that. <laughs> It looked it good. My children. <laughs> I decided that last night was going to be the night to do a whole thing in the filter. I didn't realize it until like 12 minutes into the joint. I had no idea. <laughs> no idea, bro. It was cool. But let's jump in. Uh, tell us about last week, man. So a recap of last week, a quick recap. Um, we were in Exodus chapter 3, verses 14. And um, we started the series, which we're in now, um, the I Am series, right? So mm -hmm. um, we went to back when God has chosen Moses basically to lead his people out of Egypt. And um, he came to him talking in a bush, a burning bush. And I see you got bread there. I'm going to keep talking. So we talked to him. Yeah, go ahead. Don't mind me, man. Don't mind me. <laughs> Don't mind me. And um, from there, you know, Moses had a few questions. He was like, well, um, if you go back to verse 13, I believe in Exodus, he's like, well, if they asked me who sent me. Who do I say? He said, make sure you tell them I am mm -hmm. sent you. Okay. All right. And he, before that, he even said, okay, um, who do I say your name is, basically? He's like, well, I am who I am. And just talking about his, 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 his deity, how, how superior he is, self-sufficient he is, um, and then basically how confident we should be in him um, that he is the ruler of all. And that he will be, if you, if you translate the word or the phrase, um, I am who I am, it breaks it down, I will become who I become, right? Basically saying, I will be who I need to be to help you get these people out of each. I promise this, I'm gonna make it happen. Boom, and we're saying this, we should have confidence in that, right? Um, so it was good last week, brother Adam and I had a, had a good time. Um, again, Exodus 314, if anybody wanna go back, but you are smashing that sandwich, talk to me. You got, is that mayo and just, and wheat? Mayo and, and white? Let me tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> you, ain't, you ain't go up right if you never had a mayonnaise sandwich. Mayonnaise sandwich. Well, man, you know, I, I grew up eating syrup sandwiches, not syrup, syrup, syrup. sandwiches. Yeah, and then we only had bread that didn't really have a name. Like it was, I don't, it wasn't rainbow. <laughs> it wasn't, and it was white bread. <laughs> it was just bread, it was white bread. Whatever it was, white bread. And yeah. bam, push come to shove, and you get you some good mayonnaise, and you, and you put it on the, and you put it, you put it on there, man. I tell you what, I never had man. I'm not a big mayonnaise guy, but I had a relish sandwich before. Oh man, a straight relish on the bread. <laughs> put it on there. And then when you hungry, you are gonna eat. It gonna it gonna taste like the best thing ever, right? <laughs> and, and, let me, and let me tell you, won't nothing fill you up <laughs> like a piece of bread. Because you know, the, 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 you know, now you know, I got a job, right? Got got a got a little piece of money, so I don't have to just get white bread. Yeah, I get uh, Mrs. Bird's white honey honey split white wheat bread, the honey go. split top, and I'll just get any kind of mayonnaise. I have vegan mayonnaise. This olive oil, shout out to Hellman's. You know, y'all need to run that <laughs> <laughs> olive oil. So it's just not any kind of mayonnaise. Now you know, I'm trying to cut out on some of the. The bad food, so I'm not a big, big mayonnaise person, but I do like mayonnaise on my sandwich. Hey, to be honest, I didn't realize how much bread I ate. To me, and my wife had a conversation. If we eating spaghetti, we got a roll or some toast with us. Yep. If we eating 
Um, I don't know. My mom cooking some collard greens, mac and cheese, ribs, whatever the case may be. Is it rolls or bread with it? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Every, hamburgers, bread, like, pizza, bread. Everything got bread in it. It's crazy. Taco Tuesday. If you eating soft taco, <laughs> it's bread. <laughs> it's about elemental bread. Yeah. If you eating, if you eating greens, I I personally prefer hot water cornbread. If I'm eating green. Cornbread. cornbread. What am I if, eating that cornbread and syrup? I have. I have. Not too yeah. often because if I got cornbread, that means I got something that I yeah. can just you know, we stop it, you gotta hold your fingers like that to Absolutely. Yeah. And so it's if it's if it's greens, it's hot water cornbread. If it's cabbage or uh, like red beans and rice, and it's regular cornbread in that black skillet, and it's <laughs> <laughs> you smashing that thing. <laughs> but I'll tell you one thing, eating bread, when I was really broke in college, mm-hmm. I would go to the cafeteria and load up on rolls and take them back to the room. When I get hungry at night. Yeah, we did uh, the same. Eat me some bread, man. Yeah. I hope that don't shock you, but I don't know. What, I mean, <laughs> what are we dealing with today? Um. Well, today we're going to hit the first of the seven I am's in the, the Gospel of John. And again, we'll be in John 6, 35. Um, so go ahead and give us a, a backstory or some context of uh, chapter six, if you don't mind. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let me, let me... Get, get back focus. <laughs> Is that red Kool-Aid in there? No, nah, that's water, man. Hey, I've been oh. drinking a half a gallon of water. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> it's only because I'm out of Kool-Aid. <laughs> we breaking all the rules. I'm almost done with this sandwich, bro. <laughs> okay. Let's talk, let's talk about these words so these kids can get what they came to get, right? So John chapter six is a is a very special chapter. See, so if there was a, a miracle that I'd like to have witnessed, it, it would have been this one in John chapter six, where Jesus fed the multitude, mm. five thousand men, not counting women and children, with mm. two fish and five loaves of bread. So much so that the disciples were able, each disciple, all twelve of them, were able to take away leftovers. Mm. And so I, I like I want to see that to see him break and pass and break and pass, right? And so when that miracle is done, uh, Jesus perceives that they're about to, you know, make him king and elevate him um, to an earthly position. And that's not what Jesus came here to do. Right. And so what he does before they even get the idea, excuse me, that bread, I mean, burping a little, excuse me, (laughs) before uh, they get a chance to do that, he retreats to the mountainside to be alone. All right. And then his disciples get in the boat and get in the sea in order to go to the other side. And while they're on the sea, then the wind starts blowing and it starts rocking the boat. And it's a really uh, uh, rocky, wavy sea, like a really right. dangerous situation. And it's at night. And so they're fighting for their lives. And then out of nowhere, Jesus comes walking on the wall. <laughs> this That's real crazy. casual like. That's crazy. This is, uh, yeah. first of all, I can't swim. So I can't picture myself in that moment. And the boats, the boats they had then ain't the boats they got now. And then on top of that, you see this a, a random person walking on water. Ooh. Right. And so they're not sure it's him, so they're afraid. And then Jesus is like, chill, it's me. And he gets on the boat. And as soon as he gets on the boat, they're on shore safely. Real crazy thing. Now watch this. When they get to the shore safely, guess who's there to meet them? The crowd that had been tracking him, trying to figure out where he was, uh, the crowd that he just fed. So they found their way to the other side of the sea, and they saw Jesus like, when did you get here? Like, you you went nowhere and came out of nowhere. When did you get here? And Jesus is like, look, y'all came to see me, not because you want to see some sign, but y'all want to be fed again. Y'all still hungry. Y'all, y'all, y'all came here for the food. It's like Jesus said, y'all missed the point of what I did. I, yeah. I did feed you, but it's like y'all missed the point. And so he, he, he told him, he said uh, in verse 27, it's like, don't do all of this work and all of your toil, bless you, all of this work and all of this toil for um, for food that's going to spoil. Bears, yeah. But rather do work for the food that's eternal. Okay? Um, and so they say, all right, well, how do we do that? What, what kind of work uh, do we need to do? And Jesus answered, this is verse 29. He said, uh, this is the work of God. This is the work you need to do for this eternal food. To believe in mm-hmm. me who God sent. All right, so they said, I bet. Next question, Jesus. Give us a sign. Now, I had to stop right there for a second, Cease. 
Because in, in verse 30, they're talking about give us a sign so we can see and believe. And wait a minute. Only 15,000 of y'all just saw him feed all of y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Only 15,000. With, with, with some boys fish lunch. Yeah. What 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 more do you what more do you want? What more do you need to see? But I'm not gonna I just I just thought that was interesting that they wanted a sign so they could see and believe when he said the issue is your faith. And that's like, all right, well, show us something so we can believe. He says, Okay, let me give you a sign. I'm gonna put you back in Exodus. So Exodus 15, you you walk over on dry ground through the Red Sea to get away from Pharaoh's army, mm -hmm. right? Exodus, at the end of Exodus 15, they're celebrating, they're praising God, blah, 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 blah. They got tambourines and they're singing songs. They're praising God. Exodus 16, now it's time to get walking. It's time to get moving. And they find themselves in the wilderness and they are hungry. And so they start grumbling and like, dang, Moses, you brought us out here to die. We had good food while we were in slavery and now we free and we're going to starve to death. So Moses like, all right, let me talk to God about it. So he talked to God about it. And then God rains manna from heaven, rains bread from heaven. They call it manna because they couldn't really describe it, but it was like on the grass, on the ground, like dew in the morning. So every morning they had fresh manna, fresh bread every morning. And so they pick up enough for the day and then they would have to depend on God for the next day. And so that's what he said. He said, uh, if you go back to your forefather's story, he gave them bread out of heaven to eat. And he says, truly, I say to you, though, Moses didn't do that. My father in heaven did that. Right, right. He rained that bread from heaven. And guess what? He's still raining bread from heaven. And that true bread is who? It is me. Mm -hmm. And so verse 33 says, for the bread of heaven, for the bread of God is that which comes down out of heaven and gives life to the world. So the bread in Exodus 16 gave them relief from their hunger only to the Israelites. But the bread from heaven that Jesus is talking about is going to give life to the world. Right. And so then the obvious response that the people that's listening said, man, we I mean, want that bread. <laughs> <he's that. laughs> we, we, yeah. we, want, we want that bread. That's not just white bread. That's Mrs. Bird's split honey butter top wheat bread. <laughs> we want Mm -hmm. that bread. And then that's where we land in verse 35, where Jesus says these words, I am the bread of life. Mm -hmm. He who comes to me will not hunger. And he who believes in me will not thirst. And I thought that to be uh, so magnificent because again, they're, they're trying to get the picture. They're trying to get the point because you missed the point earlier when you, you, you want a sign, he, he did that. And then he exposed to you that you came here because you're trying to be fed. And now he's trying to feed you bread that is eternal. He's trying to give you something that's going to last. He's trying to give you something that is so satisfying and not just for our stomach. And I think sometimes, even as young people, that we are so in a hurry to get satisfaction. Everything is quick and at the touch. It Right now, uh, you know, text, it's on your phone, everything. Like, I, I remember, man, growing up, and I would have to ask my parents for money and wait for their response. Or oh, I have to be wherever they are. Like, I can't call and say, Mama, can you cash out me $10? Mm -hmm. Right? But but we're in a society uh, of young people and even people our age where we long to satisfy our stomachs and our appetites. And it's with stuff that just does not satisfy over time. You'll get, you'll be full for a second, but the bread that you're after only lasts for a moment. And what Jesus is offering to these people and what he's still offering today is a complete soul satisfaction because that's what the scripture says. So you have the I am, that connects us back to the statement where God told Moses his name, tell him I am that I am, tell him I am sent you. And yeah. so now he connects himself to the great I am, which is God the Father. He says, I am. Then he says, the bread, not any kind of bread, but there's a definite article there, the bread. What kind of bread? Bread of life, bread of life. And anyone who comes to me yeah. will not hunger, 
you believe in me believe. when I thirst. Come and believe yeah. and watch yourself have complete and total and eternal soul satisfaction. Two, two things stick out to me here. Um, number one, we use a word we term now since the coronavirus has hit, it's talked about essential workers, right? You mm -hmm. can't be unless you're essential. You can't be out the house unless you're going to get, you know, a grocery store that's considered essential. Mm -hmm. But what Tex is saying right here, that Jesus is essential for our life. Absolutely. He, he's essential. So we need to have the bread of him, if that makes sense. And he's not right. talking about the physical realm, per se. It's more of the spiritual realm. Absolutely. We're not talking about mayonnaise sandwiches. No. Nah. <laughs> no, no, no. We're not talking about this. It's the, it's the spiritual realm. It's our soul, like you mentioned. Eternal life comes from our soul. Right. Us believing that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins, the whole nine, boom, and then us believing in that. And, and mention in verse 29, Come on. this is the work of God that you believed, that you believe him who, who he sent. And then going to verse 35, I am the bread of life who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes. So this is an opportunity for us to believe in Jesus Christ and follow him and not follow the world. If we follow him and not follow the world, and then number one, understand that's not... It's not a physical realm. It's talking about the spiritual realm here. Right. Right. Because that, that was the struggle because they couldn't, you know, he's given metaphors that they understand. He was like, you, you know what bread can do for your life. You know what bread can do for your hunger. Yeah. Uh, if, if you even jump back to uh, Matthew chapter five, he's talking about the Beatitudes. He's, On the mount. That is the man who hungers and thirsts after righteousness. Yeah. They shall be filled. Yeah. That's, that's a promise. And so what, what, how disappointing would it be for us to feed our spiritual hunger through that of Jesus Christ and then still come up empty, right? And, yeah. and, 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 and all of our souls are longing for something. We are, we are built to worship. Whether you want to believe in God or not, you're going to worship something. You're going to believe in something. As much as we believe in toothpaste or we believe in the chair we're sitting in, like we're going to believe in something. And it makes sense to believe in someone who can completely satisfy our soul's deepest need, deepest longing. Yes, sir. I got a question for it's you. It's funny how you be raising your hand, dog. Just thought <laughs> it's, it's, it's from radio. It's from radio because when we take turns to talk, he just we raise our hand. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Transition. That's my fault. So I got you. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> in Matthew five verse six, which you just mentioned, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. We can't do anything. How do I want to put this? We can't earn righteousness per se, right? We can't earn anything from God. So how do we explain that verse for me so it's so it's clear for us and the students to understand as far as blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. We can't earn anything, right? We're not good enough for God. But how can we hunger and still thirst for? How can we still prove that, you know, still, still, still be hungry for that righteousness? Well, the one I think, um, in, in short, I think, <laughs> like short, like Cecil short, one, <laughs> in, in short, I think there is, there has to be a, a recognizing that we are not righteous in and of ourselves, right? And so since we are not righteous in and of ourselves, and we recognize that, then there should be connected a desire to be right. Gotcha. Right. So this it's just like uh, I'm not fast, but I desire to be fast. Right. Uh, I'm not strong, but I desire to be strong. Or I can't hit the volleyball hard, but I desire to hit the volleyball hard. Or uh, I'm not good at algebra, but I desire to be good at algebra. I'm not the best son or daughter, but I desire to be. And so what what the text is saying is you're happy because of your desire, not only because you want to be right, happy is the man who hungers and thirsts after righteousness. That's desire. Your appetite is to be right. But the promise connected, or the other reason to be happy, is because he promises to feel that need. Yeah. I think what we do sometimes is we search in the wrong directions. We look for satisfaction and feeling in the wrong places with the wrong people and the wrong things. And so I, I look to my friends to feel that satisfaction void. Like I feel like it's, one of my favorite movies is Jerry Maguire, but one of the scariest lines is the most famous line of that movie. When he looks, when he looks um, 
Renee Zell working in the face mm-hmm. and says, you complete me. That's a scary thing because what it says is, is as, as romantic as that is, I, I tried it, but it didn't really work. Uh, but she said yes anyway. <laughs> Do not try that at home, man. Um, that what you're saying is, is that the void that I have, I need you as a person who's just as broken as me to make me better, to make me satisfied, to feel that appetite. Uh, we do that with people. Uh, yeah. We do that with bad habits. Yeah. Uh, we do that even in our in being comfortable and being afraid to do something and say, no, I'm just used to doing this and I'm satisfied doing that. Um, those things. And then when you look up and evaluate your life at the age of 44, you're like, man, I did all of those things and none of that satisfied until I came in right relationship with Jesus Christ and I continue to feed that particular appetite. Like you remember when you first got saved, you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. And then it was like, uh, and then it's like, yeah, like, uh, but when we continue to feed, like you, everybody has two wolves, right? You, you got um, faith and you got fear. And the one that you feed the most is the one that's going to grow strongest, yeah. right? As, and the same thing with our relationship with Jesus Christ. If we feed our faith journey, then that doesn't mean fear goes away, but faith definitely grows bigger and fear grows anemic to where it can't continue to rule and super rule your life and your actions. That's good. Feeding your faith and feeding your fear. How do you feed your faith and not your fear? Because fear is such a thing that if we realize it or not, it's every day. It's, it comes through worry. It comes through different circumstances. Like, you know, obviously we're, what we're in now. How do we feed our faith? What does that look like compared to feeding our fear? Sure. Um, so we've talked about it in our class a couple of times. So you said we've given kids very simple things. I think sometimes people think it's complicated. Like you got to go and read books <laughs> and all of that stuff. And, you know, be able to translate Greek and Hebrew and Aramaic and all of that stuff. When really two spiritual disciplines that we always talk about in our class is scripture intake and prayer. Mm. Scripture intake and prayer. And then talking to people that have lived life in, yeah. as, a, as a Christian. Like our conversations help me so much uh, because there are things that you've accomplished in life that 98% of the population would love to have done, but you fed your faith and you showed your work with it. Yeah. And then when the opportunity came, you were prepared to capitalize on it. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? And there are areas in my life where it's done the same. But when I look at you and I watch your life, I'm like, man, you know, here's a guy who's actually shown uh, what the, <laughs> hey girl, uh, what, the, what, it, what it looks like to believe something and then to pursue it. And yeah. so I, I say as it relates to Jesus Christ and learning more about him, really taking time, scripture intake, we got to read our Bibles, man. Um, yeah. We got to pray, continuously pray, and be in relationship with people who live life a little bit longer and, and walk with the Lord for some time. I think that last part is so key, and that's something I'm still working on myself, just understanding, okay, it's okay to talk the word, it's okay to read the word, but following people or being around people that actually live out the word. Yeah. Right? That have been there longer than you, that have understand, they understand what's, they've been where you, in, in your shoes, they understand where you're going. And just to listen to them, pick their brain, Follow how they follow. Um, I mean, it's not, you know, not, not follow how they follow, excuse me, but follow them and their lead, per se. And um, I think that's huge when it comes to just understanding feeding your faith and feeding your fear. When, you, when you're doing that, staying in your word and you're praying and you're surrounding yourself with like-minded people, you're feeding your faith. But if you're not doing those things, then fear, the devil's going to start putting that doubt in your mind. going to start putting that worry and that fear and whatever your fears are or fear is, um, that thing can grow and it can grow rapid. So let me ask you this, Cease. Um, what what can our what can our students do this week um, that you know that has worked in your life um, to kind of handle those areas where we may be fearful or may be troubled? Is there something that they can do? Because I would like to, I would love for us to issue them a challenge. Um, shalom. shalom. So what 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 would you have from your expertise? I, I would say, um, or this is something we talked about off offline and it's simply one thing I, I used to do is literally write down my goals write down my goals 
and then I can see it. I can work every day to be able to accomplish those goals. Mm -hmm. Well, in this situation, how about we write down our fears? So the mm -hmm. challenge is write down our fears. I'm going to be completely honest with yourself. Um, don't worry about the what ifs or the worst case scenario Just simply write down your fears and then write down some action steps for you to take to help get rid of those fears until the fears are no longer um, something you're thinking about constantly all day, every day. So to really write down your fears and then um, write the action steps out. And then as far as your faith, have faith that you're going to do the action steps, right? So spend time in your word, um, spend time in prayer about uh, what you got going on as far as your fears. And then uh, let's have faith in the Lord that he will help you get through those action steps and you can help. Um, he can help you get through your fears. So I think write your fears down and um, just watch it decrease. I, I, I think so. Real, real quick question before, before we get off. Will that make your fears disappear? <laughs> Fear is a part of life. <laughs> Fear is never going to. I'm sorry, yeah. This is what happens when you got seven kids. This <laughs> wife took some. I got some here. She was that, asleep. That makes but, me fearful. <laughs> <laughs> but fear is never going to go away, right? It's, it's about managing it. It's about understanding, not letting it take over your life. Because fear is some fear can be good. You can use that fear to to give you energy to do the correct things or to give you the motivation to, to um, stay away from that. But Fear is something that's always going to come up. It's just about how we handle it. And we have to learn how to handle our fear. We can't let it pile up, pile up, pile up until we, it paralyzes us. But going about it in this way is a, is a good way. And then you mentioned it before, praying, staying your word, have like-minded people around you. And then in this situation, our challenge, writing down our fears and taking action steps to be able to de decrease that fear. I heard a quote today, and we're going we're gonna to close out with this. I heard a quote today, man. Um, I was listening to Engine Radio this afternoon. <clears throat> And I want to modify the quote for this particular situation. The presence, well, here's the actual quote, quote, the presence of obstacles is not the absence of God. The presence of obstacles does not mean the absence of God. It's the same thing with fear. The presence, the, abs, the presence of fear does not mean that God is absent. And, it, and and actually to acknowledge that you have fears doesn't make you any less spiritual, man. We take our burdens to the Lord and we leave them there. We cast our cares on him, the Bible says, because he He cares for us. And God can handle our fears. I like that challenge. Go be honest with yourself. Be honest with God. Write down your fears and your action steps. And look, young people, if you're not sure what kind of actions to take, here are a couple of options. Reach out to us. Yes. You know, you know how to find us, or we'll, we'll even we know we, we're going to connect with a lot of you guys throughout throughout the week. Uh, jump in on Bible studies on Wednesday night, and you can drop those questions on. You know, what what are some steps that you suggest? And if not us, then somebody that uh, you trust that's been living life a little bit longer than you, um, that's also a believer, that can help you to write out action steps to deal with those fears that you've been honest about. And then, um, and then keep them somewhere and, and, and watch what God does in those areas in your life. And that way you can always have a landmark to look back and say, I remember when I, I dealt with those issues and it may have taken three years, but God saw me through it. And so the fear may have still been there, but he gave me uh, bravery in the face of it. Yeah, courageous. That's good. Yeah, courageous, yeah. Joshua 1, be strong and courageous. It's going to be hard. Oh, no doubt. But he told Joshua, just like he'll, he's telling us, that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. And when it, and, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there's always liberty. Something about his presence, man. Um, students, uh, for those of you who are watching today, if uh, you have not come in the right relationship with Jesus Christ, uh, today would be a great day. Uh, it's very simple. Simply believe, just like the scripture said, that he is who he says he is, that he is uh, the savior of the world, that he died on the cross for our sin and that he rose on the third day morning and he's coming back uh, to receive all of those to him who believe. That's it. And once you accept Jesus Christ as your savior, then let us come alongside and walk this Christian life with you. It's called discipleship. Let us just love on you and walk this Christian life with you. If you're new uh, to accepting Christ, please reach out to the church and let us know so we can connect you with somebody in our ministry. Or if you're rededicating your life or, or renewing your relationship with Jesus Christ, let us know the same way so somebody can connect with you 
in our ministry. Uh, we love you guys. We miss you guys. And uh, when it's safe, I can't wait. Please, I can't wait to be back in the physical space with these marvelous young people of our church, man. It's going to be a good time. It's going to be fun. Stay safe out there, y'all. Yeah. Cease, would you dismiss us in prayer real quick, bro? Absolutely. Let's bow our heads. Lord, thank you for this day. Um, thank you for uh, the awesome word that you put on Brother Jason and myself's heart that you um, may speak to the kids and speak to the students and speak to the adults and whoever's listening, um, that they hear you through our mouths, Lord. We pray that we continue to keep everybody safe, um, that you continue to cover us, Lord, um, as we travel. As we step out the house, um, everything evolves around you. You are the center of it all, Lord. We love you. We appreciate you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to finish this sandwich, bro. <laughs> I'm going to eat your mayonnaise. <laughs> Vegan mayonnaise, bro. <laughs> <laughs>